Carson's Ulster Volunteer Force was getting ready to over Ross. And then when the Irish Volunteers were split after Redmond's commitment to follow the British war effort. Yeah. That bastard Joseph Devlin made sure that most of Belfast went with him. Also, Belfast was Redmondite, unfortunately. We had thousands of them. But after the split, there was only 130 of us left to go to Tyrone for the rising. That's so, awful. And what happened in Tyrone? Utter confusion. We were supposed to go and join Liam Mellow's brigade out in the west. And then the counter order comes through from Owen McNeil that all operations are cancelled. Then Connolly says that not a shot's to be fired at Ulster. I was getting my information from a different channel. What channel was that, the Fenian from? <laughs> Very funny. Uh, needless to say, Joe, it all ended up being a bit of a shambles. After the rise, and I became a Sinn Fein counselor down in Wicklow, where I was teaching. Aye, well, I spent those years in an English jail. Uh, Far cry from Seaford Street. The British have executed James Conley. They took him into the yard of Kilmainham Jail, tied him to a chair and shot him. How dare you, sir? James Conley was a hero to the working class people here in Belfast. James Conley was a traitor. Stabbed our boys in the back whilst they're fighting for their lives in France. That man you call a traitor is the most honest courageous man I have ever met in my life. A man who fought for us women in the mills when no one else would. Believed in right and wrong, in equality. Fought tooth and nail to improve our conditions. Nobody's fortunate to work there. I have children to feed, bellies to fill. Then do your job. If we're late, we lose a full day's pay. Then be on time. It's obvious you've never set foot in the linen mill. No, but I was a steel fitter before the war along with my brother. They pay us half of what the men get, but we do the same job. It's the same all over the city. Children work there too. Half timers they're called. Connolly fought to stop that. Boys, as young as 16, are fighting in the trenches at this very minute, losing their lives. Girls as young as 12 are dying in the mills. Lung disease caused by the damp conditions. Here's a contradiction for you. There was us, Nell and I, in Kumunaman, and our brother Henry in the Irish Volunteers. All three of us ready to fight for Ireland. Then there was our brother George at the Somme, and him fighting for the Australians. He was killed there in 1916. And Charlie, my sweet, brother Charlie, dear, dear Charlie. He fought on the side of the Canadians. He was gassed in that first war, but he survived. Oh, allies of king and country, indeed. Hardly a poor, not in a war. Fighting for rights. I was good at the shooting. Stationary targets. I came second in the shooting competition that Christmas and seeing as how I'd only joined in October, that was some going. Oh, we did all the other stuff too. First aid and writing, carrying dispatches, reconnaissance, intelligence, military drill. We were moving on to moving targets when the rising happened. I made sandwiches for Charlie before he left. I got a pound of sausages from the butchers. I didn't have the money to pay him, but he seen I needed them. And I wanted to give Charlie something substantial for the long journey. So I cut up a bath and put butter and sugar on it. Give him energy when he needed it. I wondered, when would he eat again? Who would feed him? Where would he eat? Would he eat? He was going to Dublin. He wore his best suit of clothes, his only suit of clothes, and his shoes were gleaming from the polishing he gave them. The few bits and pieces that he had he put into a new brown suitcase, his 
grandfather had got it from Smithfield Market. His grandfather knew that he wouldn't remain here, that the world would call him for greater things. Charlie was good with his hands. He became a motor mechanic. Before emancipation, decolonization.